work. Okay, and maybe I can pin my video for a second. So uh, just a few words in the beginning. Uh, uh, looking at the, at the questions in the WhatsApp group, I have an impression that not all students went to refresh uh, YouTube lectures and our Zoom uh, flipped classroom recordings. And uh, I feel uh, that uh, it's not so good. It's not so good because there are answers to many questions they are asking. And uh, I, I even may tell you that even more than half will be he heavily based on uh, on our lectures and Zoom meetings. So I warmly recommend you, if you didn't do it yet, just uh, on speed uh, to say, go through all the material and refresh it in your head and put some notes on the paper. In my feeling, this is the most useful and helpful for you, what you can do in this last hours before the exam. Okay, and after this brief uh, introduction, uh, uh, let's move to questions. If if you have any, uh, and uh, I, I I ask again. I hope that uh, there will be much more responses. Uh, who watched uh, those two reception hours uh, of two years ago? Anirati, because they are very informative. They, they, they actually the best I did uh, during uh, the, uh, those years, because uh, not only I give material, but uh, students are so actively participating, then they really go through all the material. So the second thing I warmly recommend you really to go through those lectures. And one more thing, I uh, I published. Uh, you pro probably saw all, already playlist of all, all our Zoom meetings this year. Only uh, meeting 12, we use a recording of two years, uh, even three years ago, because it was uh, very successful. A recording of a second meeting on semi definite on conic programming. Yes, and I also put in the end those. Uh, I think I did it. Uh, those old uh, reception hours and everything. So just go for this. This is the most concentrated material to activate your knowledge towards the exam. Uh, okay, and now I'm back with you. I have a question, please. Okay. Uh, can I share my screen? Yeah. Uh, from a uh, Moed Bet uh, 1970, uh, uh, 2070, uh, question number three. 17, yes, okay. And, uh, and uh, immediately, I you usually I ask help of other students because uh, saying honestly, I didn't re refresh carefully, but let's try to see together. Okay. You see my screen? Yes, and uh, remind us the, the questions. The this questions. is the question. This is the solution. This is the question. But uh, repeat, uh, just explain us the question. Uh, denoting the Athens uh, subspace M. Yeah. Uh, and the XK define the arg mean by alpha of uh, phi. Yeah. Uh, we need to show that the gradient of a phi k is orthogonal to the affine subspace m. Yes, and immediately, okay. uh, just second, just second. Immediately, I ask, did you watch uh, most of them? Yes. The the video and zoom. You no, know, Michael, it's 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 a, a lot of hours of videos. Uh, I can remember much. everything, so I. No, no, I I would work. say. Immediately, if you didn't, I, I just will not answer. Because if, if there is, a, and, and I say you, the, the answer should be there. And I ask uh, other students, 
Did did you see the answer uh, to this question? I, I saw I saw the videos and I also asking the question again. I don't understand what what's wrong. Okay, uh, the, then okay. You cannot yeah. uh, answer me. No, no, I I am with you. I am with okay. you. Okay. So if you can explain uh, the answer, uh, I'll be glad. Thanks. Ah no no no, I am not with you. Please. Uh, Tell what you know and what uh, you are lucky. I, I didn't understand why uh, uh, the fact that the VK uh, is minimum, yeah. uh, this means that the directional derivative uh, in any direction uh, spent by the subspace M is zero. The, the second, okay. the second okay. uh, sentence. Uh, let's try me go again, despite that. I think in, even in those receptions hour uh, from two years ago, we, we go to this, but let's let's go once more. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, annotate. Let me annotate. And there is such a picture in the lecture. Assume that we have a subspace M. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are staying at some point and moving in arbitrary the direction from this point. Okay. Uh, what 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 are possible situation? Uh, how our objective function may be depending on uh, on shift in this direction? What was notation d? Di. Okay. Okay. Or, or uh, actually, any any vector be belonging to the subspace. Okay. There are uh, several possible situations. Mm -hmm. I claim that uh, actual situation is like this. Because the other possible situations, let me change color. Uh, other possible situation is that objective function will change somehow in this way or in opposite direction can uh, can it be such a second situation uh, the answer is no because uh, otherwise we will move a little bit and get to the value of the function which is lower than at our uh, what is our uh, say x xk yes this is what what you draw here the red it's a tangent it's a mashik uh, red uh, just a second uh, red straight line uh, let me put one more color Michael, but this is true only if we are uh, in a separable uh, function by alpha right we can separate it no to no 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 this is a very general claim. I, I have an arbitrary function of x, yes? Yes. And I am allowed only to move in subspace M, in a fine subspace M. In any direction, I'm staying in some point, and I am allowed to move in any direction. I can move in this direction as well. Okay, and in any direction, my function as a uh, as a function of displacement in the, the direction should have minimum its at point x k. Otherwise, I, I would decrease my function so at k x k will not be. I agree. I agree. I hope you I explain. It. Okay. So every point at the subspace is a minimum for every uh, for every direction. No, no. If I am staying in the point which uh, achieves this minimum over subspace, okay. okay. This property of my point that it's minimizer over subspace. What does it mean? It's minimizer over subspace. It achieves the minimal function value among all other points in subspace M. 
minimum, minimum function or minimum value? Minimum function value. Okay. Minimum fee. Yeah. Among all points in this subspace M, mm -hmm. it has minimal fee. Mm -hmm. so if I move from this point in any direction, I will not decrease my function. It's by, by definition of minimum. Mm -hmm. I agree. So there, there cannot be a negative slope in any direction. Okay. But if there is a positive slope in some direction, then in opposite, uh, it will be ne ne negative if my function is smooth, mm -hmm. if, if it's continuously differential. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the argument. Okay. This is the point? Yes. Because because if there is a, a decreasing, uh, there was also a, a again if if there is a increasing in in one way, the, there was decreasing in the other way, and that's not possible. So it's zero. That's yes. the point. Yes. 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 Okay. If it is okay. increasing in some direction, then in minus this direction, it should be decreasing. Yes, yes. What, what was? Yes, Lee. Uh, it's better here. Uh, yes. Okay. At a whole like it be read. We are not no Nagzor Bangrit. Oh, I say in English. Uh, up to you. A different or a short edition. Besider. Tell in Hebrew and we will try to translate you. As big large XK, the argument shall see. אז זה אומר שהאינגרדיאנט בנקודה xk הוא אפס. אבל זה ארגמין, זה לא ארגמין, just second, זה לא ארגמין בכל מרחב. מחוץ לתת מרחב m יכולה להיות נקודה שפונקציה יותר נמוכה מ-xk. אני רק טוען על נקודות בתת מרחב. So uh, I should translate. So the, the question was that is xk is a, is, a, is a minimizer of entire function. Then its gradient should be zero. And what I say that its k may be minimizer over a m, over a fine subspace m, but out of subspace, Maybe at some point where the function is uh, smaller than this. As as you say, you say that xk, the gradient of xk, can be changed by zero. Yes, this is ex ex exactly what I am claiming. The gradient of uh, phi is not zero, but its projection onto subspace is, is zero. It means that gradient. If it is not zero, it must be orthogonal. This is nabla phi. It should be orthogonal to my uh, subspace M, I mean orthogonal to any direction in this subspace. Okay, to oh, Please, please. Thanks. Okay. Uh, please, uh, if you may in English, or if not, we will uh, uh, translate. Uh, let's try in Hebrew. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, I will sh share the screen. Just a second. Can you see my screen? Uh, Ledger, uh, yes. In, in Ledger. Okay, th this is better. Now it's good? Yeah, it's better. כן, כן. טוב, אז יש פה שאלה על קונבקסיטי, השאלה הזאתי. בעצם נתונה איזושהי פונקציה עם פרמטרים, פונקציית מטרה, ונתון איזשהו אילוץ על התחום שאנחנו צריכים לחפש בו את המינימום. עכשיו, יש פה שני תנאים. התנאי השני מהווה פשוט מעגל בתוך התחום, ופה אנחנו מקבלים תנאי אחר. אז... בהכרח החיתוך שלהם גם יהיה אה, סוג של קשת, אה, מעגל או נקודה. 
השאלה מה קורה במקרה של, של נקודה, האם אני יכול להגיד שאם יש לי נקודה אחת, ב... זאת נקודת האילוץ שלי, נקודה בודדת, אני יכול להגיד שהבעיה קונבקסית? או, oh, you are asking very interesting question, so I should translate. So if you have a, a problem, say, with a convex objective function, by the way, I see that this uh, objective function should be convex only for neg negative, no. Yes, negative beta. No, you, you have here bet beta cube. Okay, e even with objective it's function. It's keep the yeah. sign, yes, it's keep the sign. You... Ah, 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 sorry, it's linear. Okay, with negative beta, it's okay. So the, the question was, if uh, we have uh, constraints which uh, look non-convex, at least one of them, the second constraint, may it happen that feasible area is convex? Uh, and then you can claim that uh, the problem itself is, is convex despite that it looks uh, like non-convex. Uh, by the way, the, there is a in, entire, entire field uh, which is called hidden co convexity. And uh, Professor Aaron Bental, who was my advisor, PhD advisor in Tasiyava Nigul in industrial engineering, he is a, a world expert in this area of hidden convexity. He succeeded to show many important engineering problems and scientific problems that they are actually convex despite that they look like non-convex. Okay, so uh, let's look together. You, you, you say that this is really the case, that those two constraints have uh, only one point in the intersection? So it's feasible area is one point? לא, זה, זה לא המצב, בגלל שיש פה אמ�, פרמטרים, אז uh, זה יכול לשנות את ה... זה יכול לשנות פה את התנאי הראשון. But, but ואז you בסוף... Say, but you say you, you might be lucky that there are such parameters that your feasible area will be just one point, yes? אני אומר תיאורטית, כאילו, yes, יש פה yes. חיתוך בגלל... So, uh, I, 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 I would say, I would say, if, if no, you... למה זה יכול להיות גם אליפסה, uh, לא? What, what was the, the question about second constraint or, or the third? I mean, the But pay attention that the second constraint, first of all, let's understand one important thing. The second constraint is not convex. Why? Despite that somebody naive would say it looks like convex. Because, uh, yeah, okay, thank you mamash. very much. Thank you very much, yes. So if, if you have a nonlinear function with equality constraint, then uh, the feasible uh, 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 area is just li line. It's not, it's not convex, of course. But uh, what was told that uh, maybe we are lucky and the intersection of those non-convex sets is convex. And my answer is yes. If you are so clever student that you are able to show that constraints which look like non-convex, but give a feasible, a convex feasible area, it would be considered as excellent answer to such a problem, uh, such a question. But and how would you really answer this problem? Uh, in, the, in this way, you, you, you would say the, the problem is not convex, but if you will find such uh, parameters that it, it will have only one point, it's very degenerative convex problem because uh, it has uh, the only solution, you, you immediately see it, yes? You don't have to minimize anything. 
then uh, yes, then you would say that the problem is convex. I don't know whether uh, are, there, are there such a configuration of parameters which uh, give you only one point in intersection. Okay, let, 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 let leave this open. Yes, let leave this open. And say thank you very much for very, very nice notes. Thank you. מיכאל, אפשר עוד שאלה קטנה? האמת היא שלפני שאתה שואל שוב, אני גם אשמח שאלה קטנה. אני צריך לתרגלת את כל המילים לאנגלית? אוקיי, תמשיך. אני אשמח לשאול שאלה קטנה, אם תוכל להסביר בדף של השאלות התיאורטיות, למה אתה מתכוון? רק שנייה, רק Uh, let's uh, stop sharing if there are no no questions of our other students re regarding this okay 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 then yes, your your question about uh, the question list uh, yes yes okay go, go. so my question if you can explain uh, what do you mean by external and internal definition because uh, it uh, came up here my and here immediate, my and here. immediate Just a second. My immediate answer would be go and watch the lecture. Which one? Because I... Uh, then I the, ask you which lecture... In the beginning lecture, of the week and I couldn't find it. And I asked other lecture, students and they didn't find it as well. That's why I'm asking. Uh, just a second. Let, let us ask other students. First of all, which lecture deals on uh, with gradients and Hessians? This is a lecture. I think the first lecture. Uh, first in the list. Uh, <laughs> just a second. I, I, uh, this is my question to other students as well. Did, did anybody see uh, this definition in, uh, in the lecture? When yes. we go, huh? Yes, I saw the external definition in the in the lectures yes and the in, internal is just a column of uh, partial derivatives and external is uh, uh, differential of the function is inner product of gradient with differential of argument but it was explicitly told in the lecture i really really invite you which which one the, the, the lecture you, you explicitly said this is the external definition because i i looked and i couldn't find it uh, just a second who who was talking now i i was talking no 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 uh, one more student Uriel. i was speaking uh, i said i Shachar. saw it Shachar. yeah yes please, yes. please uh, help me help me I think it was in the second lecture of the of the um, work in the Coursera. Yes, and uh, you explicit you did explicitly say it is an external definition. Yes, and, and okay. this is exactly the point where we introduce the gradient. And the okay, so uh, I'll go look there. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, if I, if I could, I I have a question as well. Yes. I will share the screen if it's okay. Just yeah. one second. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, so um, <clears throat> it's concerning the same uh, exam um, that we asked about. I have, I have two questions. Would you like a, a little bit increase? Uh... Yes, I could. Okay. Is this fine? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's enough. Yeah, okay, yeah. so... Um, For my first question, I wanted to ask um, for a set, for a set to be convex, can we, um, is the same definition for um, the second derivative to be positive definite, is, does it hold for a set and not only a function? Oh, for set, it, uh, it's more challenging. You can try do something like this, but uh, think about, uh, even about sphere, What is its second uh, 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 even about uh, circle together with its internal parts uh, or sphere? Exactly. What would you say its sec uh, second derivative? You should right, find so somehow it, in parametric form. Yes. 
you can right. try to investigate we, we didn't study this in the course but you can try to investigate and if there is functional characterization uh, it, okay I, I i would say also in this way uh, your set may be a sub-level set of convex function right it's uh, one of things so in order to solve this question i i would so i would i would do the same as i do for a regular function and if i have um if and that's a big if if i have some explicit form that i can express the the second derivative i can assume something about it uh, just, just a second uh, can you point uh, which uh, right. this formula question right here. Uh, to show that this just second you want sufficient uh, sufficient uh, conditions on the parameters that provide uh, just second ju just second one simple way would say if you have conditions some function smaller equal than one then if this function is convex then set is convex it's not uh, it's not necessary it's sufficient condition so it's like a set of points that satisfy this function okay once uh, once again just a second i, I will put in this my mark if oh it's black i should take other color if you show that this function is convex then of course uh, the constraint in, is convex and the area is convex but sometimes uh, maybe i will change color uh, Sometimes you may have a so-called quasi-convex functions. For, the, for example, even this function of one variable, it's not uh, convex, yes? Right. But if you consider any sublevel set, it will be interval, yes? Yes. And the interval is convex set. And the same is uh, easily extendable to uh, two-dimensional function of two variables you you can rotate this body yes okay i understand so it says very interesting thing and uh, in the book of stephen boyd you may find the notion of uh, quasi-convex functions and even techniques that allow to solve uh, numerical problems minimization with quasi-convex functions and thank you again. We have very nice questions today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, if I could, um, there's just one other question. Um, uh, I should uh, remove my drawing. If, all right. Yeah, if you can. Um, it's concerning the, um, the second question here. Yes. OK, so for the first part, they ask if the problem is convex. And from um, differentiating the, the objective function twice, um, it can be seen that it is it's not PSD, it's negative definite. Yeah. Therefore, it is therefore it is uh, a concave function. Concave objective with convex constraints. So it's not convex optimization problem. Right, yeah. so it's not convex, but one thing I did see after, after solving everything and finding the dual problem and solving the dual problem, I saw that the, that the dual problem um, provides the same result as the primal problem, although this problem is not convex. So I was thinking maybe it's because it's strictly concave, we can um, we can do minus and do the max on the minus, which is a convex function. It, uh, that, is that why it holds? I don't understand why it holds. Yeah, Sakhar, thank you. Thank you again for very nice question. Uh, yeah, of course. It's not, it's not because the uh, objective function is strictly concave it because objective function is concave quadratic function and the constraint is a convex quadratic constraint and this is uh, exactly one of way, very important areas you would not believe that uh, Aron Bintal, professor Aron Bintal studies for many years and they 
they have a very nice consequences. So this is the problem with so-called hidden convexity. It really possesses strong duality, and you are right. You may solve dual problem as a as a convex. <clears throat> and uh, even more than this, I I tried but, to learn this many many years ago, and I forget many many stuff. But if you take dual of dual problem again, you you get. Uh, Con convex problem equivalent convex problem in primal variable but but this is not very intuitive as we learned that um for for strong duality to hold the problem must be con uh, must be a convex function and yeah, if yes, we have a concave uh, and not, a convex yes yes I, I agree with you it's not intuitive it requires a separate uh, deep study okay uh, so only but, by Yes, yes. Uh, actually, you... only by solving the dual problem, we could actually see that um, strong duality holds. Yes, yes. You strong you solve dual problem, you substitute, you check KKT condition. It's one of straight way and uh, other ways around. But I should uh, mention that the, there was a question on WhatsApp. Uh, somebody solved a problem and told that he tries to maximize dual, but give gets to local maximum. Yes, dual problem is maximization of concave function. Right. Get to local maximum, and he is not sure where, where is the global one. And this is my question to you. Okay. Um, Can such I don't a think situation exists. For a concave function, we don't have a global minimum. You have it. You have it only in a in a certain area. But we maximize. We maximize concave function. Oh, right. So if we maximize the concave function of this, we, we will not have a global a maximum. We will have a it's, maximum it's, it's in some. Not, uh, just a second. It's not about this problem which we have here. It's about okay. the yeah. general, general question. It's okay. about a general question. Uh, how can you give me more space for writing? Can you remove uh, the, yeah. the, the right? Uh, yes, and the, remove the right hand part of the world, auxiliaries. Where? To remove yeah. right column of the. The tool section. Oh, right, right, right. Tools. Uh, yeah, yeah, Just, yeah. Uh, no, no, Put mouse on the cross. Go right in the screen. Right, 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 right. No, go yeah. uh, down, 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 down. Uh, here, yeah, here. Somebody showed you. No. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I under <laughs> okay, I understand here. This okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, so uh, we have Lagrangian. Lagrangian of uh, x x y x lambda doesn't matter. It's uh, f of x. Uh, for example, we have problem with inequality constraint. Plus uh, y transpose g of x. And uh, our function eta of y is uh, minimum over x. We, we come to the kind of question which we considered in previous reception hour. Yes? Yes. G did I write? And mm -hmm. I ask you. Can we claim that eta of y is uh, concave, actually? I, I, I will give you a picture. If I have several linear functions, yes? And I take a minimum of them, let's change color. And I take minimum of several linear functions. It's not so 
nice drawing, but you understand what do, do I mean? Yes. Uh, we see that this minimum, we see from the picture, but it can be proven that minimum of set of concave function is the, the same that we learned in other in other place in our course that if we have several uh, convex functions yes we have sev several convex functions and uh, take uh, maximum and take maximum yes yeah, this convex. function is convex yes yes so maximum of several convex functions is uh, convex and the opposite is just with minus sign if I, I take this situation with minus I, I will get minimum of set of concave functions <coughs> it should be concave in, part in particular linear functions and uh, now I ask you a question. For given x, uh, what uh, is this function as function of y? For fixed x. Linear. It's linear. This is a constant, yes? This is a constant. And this is a linear function of y. G, G of x is also a constant vector. And then we choose other x and again take this and another x and again take this. And we can take infinitely many x's. So we really in this situation <coughs> when we take minimum of set of linear functions and this minimum is concave. That's why dual function is always concave. Even if our original problem is not convex, dual we'll function always is concave. only always concave. The, okay. the only question okay. is whether, uh, just, just a second, only one word and I, I will give it. The, the only question is whether if we solve <coughs> dual problem, whether we will get to solution of primal problem. So uh, there may be duality gap. If there is no du duality gap, we may get to solution of non-convex problem. If there is du duality gap, we get lower bound. It's so-called relaxation of convex optimization problem. And it's widely used in numerical optimization, a relaxation. Thank you very much, Michael. Of course, of course. Uh, je, just a second. Be, 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 uh, before you move it, let, let's finish with, with this and ask whether there are questions because I should remove my drawing. No problem, yes. no problem. Yes, 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 ולא התייחסנו פה למקרה שנגיד הפונקציה על הגרנג'יאן לא מוגדר באיזה נקודה, נגיד הוא מתפוצץ או משהו, אז מינימום של פונקציה ש... שלא מוגדרת גם לא מוגדר שם, אבל מסביב זה יכול לשאוף נגיד לאינסוף או למינוס אינסוף, ערכים לא סופיים. Lagrangian is not everywhere defined. You mean uh, there might be access where uh, for, for y it's very, very nice function. Yes, if uh, g exists and f exists uh, as function of y it's uh, defined. There may be a situation that for some access uh, Lagrangian is not defined. Yes. כן, למשל אני אתן דוגמה, נגיד אם יוצא לי, אה, יצא לי נגיד אה, x שתלוי בלמדה בצורה הזאת, ואם אני מציב אה, ערכים של למדה שקרובים ל-1... Just second, just second. Lambda is something else or it's our y? Why, why? Lambda is the wire. Yes. Yes. 
רגע, שנייה. First of all, I immediately, immediately ask you, when we consider Lagrangian function of X and Y, those two parts, F of X and G of X, should not depend on Y. Other, other, otherwise, it's not uh, normal Lagrangian. Yeah, I think he's referring to the transition to the dual problem. Yes, he minimized, he minimized and by x and he got a function of x as a function of lambda so you you you're asking how do we do this technically but we be, before we we are finding this problem we uh, understand uh, we understand that uh, the dual problem is uh, concave yes that for yes. every x and then you ask about how technically to get to it, uh, maybe one should dive. Maybe, okay, uh, maybe I, I, I only may ask for collective, for help of collective brain, if you want to continue to investigate this concrete example, or- I have another, another related question, Michael. Yes. Uh, just a second, uh, just a second. You should decide with this. Uh, uh, if it's very technical, maybe we'll postpone it till end. And then uh, people who are willing to participate in brainstorming, we, we will do it together, okay? Michael, the truth is that I'm asking this for some people because we got the same answer and it's not going to be in terms of duality. We got the function of duality, eta is equal to eta of... של למדה, למדה, שווה משהו בסגנון הזה. והיא לא פונקציה קונבקסית. Just second. הבעיה שהיא לא קונבקסית, הבעיה שהייתה שהיא לא קונבקסית, מלכתחילה זה הייתה לא קונבקסית, נכון? נו, נו, נו. Once again. Even if primal problem is not convex, as we understood now, the, the dual, dual must be convex. Must okay. be. And now your question is, uh, is this uh, first term, is it convex? It may be convex for lambda smaller than one, For lambda, bigger than one. for lambda bigger than one, it is convex, yes? Yes, uh, we check that. Okay. You know, it's rather technical. In any case, let postpone this question to, to the end of our meeting and we will uh, return to it, to it together, okay? Okay, okay not, to, no uh, not to hold other people. Okay. Okay. Yes. About this problem. Yes. Uh, there was there was another question related to uh, conjugate function. Uh, just, uh, just a second. Uh, do do we have any questions or comments about this writing? Because otherwise, yes. Yes. Okay. Omri. Yes. Of course. <laughs> so my drawing... Uh, okay. okay, אז נניח שפונקציית המטרה שלנו הייתה כמורה. אוקיי. ובגלל שמדובר... Objective function is convex, yes. ובגלל שמדובר במעגל והמעגל uh, כמור. Yes, אז... and the circle is also convex, okay. אז כל הפונקציה, כל הבעיה הייתה כמורה, נכון? Yes. The problem would be convex if okay, the objective and the, the constraint is convex. And yeah. this particular example is so-called hidden convexity. Actually, this is a convex problem, but one should work to convert it into equivalent convex problem. And um, one last question. Um, if I was to... If I was to say that the minimum of a concave function is the same as the maximum of a convex function, and 
So I, if I change this minimum and I put maximum with a minus sign, would the problem still be the same? Would, would, the, would it be correct? Just a second. But also, <clears throat> if, if you have maximization problem to maximize convex function over convex set, is it convex optimization problem? The question for everybody. It is yeah, not. I, why not. not? Why not? Because uh, it's, it may be very difficult problem and it may have uh, many lo uh, local in extrema. We, we know that minimum of convex function over convex set is very nice and uh, good good for yes, solving yes. and good for analysis. And But maximize convex function it's the same as minimize concave function. That's what I'm saying. Would it be correct? And in to general, say, in general, it's not convex optimization problem. Okay. Okay. Except for some very nice special cases. Once you have this clearly. Okay. Should I remove my draw, draw, drawing, or there was uh, a question about conjugate function, which is somehow related to this writing? Yes. I will stop sharing now. Okay. <coughs> okay. What was? Uh, just a second. There was some uh, question now. Uh, Omri, or who, who, who wanted to, to ask? Okay, uh, so about uh, your, your question is about computational draft, yes? Draft yes. Yes. Ah, okay, good. בעיקרון יש הרבה שאלות שבהן צריך לצייר איזשהו computational graph ואז לחשב gradient with respect to איזשהו משתנה על גבי ה-computational graph. גם שלחתי לך על זה מייל, מיכאל. Just a second, I should uh, translate. There are many questions about uh, to compute uh, gradients over computational graph. Yes. Yes, I'm with you. Uh, ו... אנחנו רואים בפתרונות שיש הרבה פעמים ממש תרשימים שעליהם מציירים את הגרדיאנט בכל שלב עבור כל... אוקיי, זה... זה גנרלי used in uh, neural not, network community and, but also in uh, computational differentiation but, but I give you very general recipe, yes? In, in my lecture. I, I don't know. I, I am telling you immediately. I know my recipe and, uh, I, and I even ask you to know my recipe because it's very general and very straightforward. And I want you to use it for, you, for those examples, not to follow their solutions, forget about their solutions and uh, go to the picture, if anybody has picture of computational graph from the lecture and try to go to, to this. Yes, to, to go, okay, yes, yes, ex ex exactly. You, you do a computational graph and you put the, the dx on the, on the left and d, dy and you immediately get a product of arbitrary vector with Jacobian. אז להשתמש בשיטה הזאת שאתה מציע ככה, זה לגמרי קביל במבחן, ואפשר גם yeah. ככה. זאת אומרת, It's זה עדיין נכון, uh, והתוצאות טובות. It's strongly preferable. I, I encourage you in our course, because our lectures and Zoom meetings are very synchronized, and they bring one paradigm which doesn't overload your brain. To solve everything in this paradigm, it will be easier for you, and the knowledge will stay with you for longer. 
Okay. Try to okay. solve in this paradigm. But but it's acceptable okay. if we do it this, this way. Like it's, it's acceptable, but I will not co uh, comment. And I even in, encourage you if you may spend uh, some time and uh, re rewrite it in the way we do it in the lecture. It will the, be the only difference is, is the is the weight on the edges or not. If correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Just a second. I see I see this way as as it shown now more intuitive. I don't know. I don't know. Do uh, I, I ask other question? Do, I, I, are you are you free with the method which was was presented in the lecture? You must. If you learn some extra, it's good, but you must to be familiar with what was given in this short lecture. It's very basic and very easy, and I really ask you to take an example and translate it to that language. Yes, and once again, try to translate it because it's very easy. In lecture, in the language of differential, it's very easy and very intuitive, yes? You, you get in this way product of Jacobian <coughs> by uh, arbitrary vector. And by the way, if, you, if your function, if your network has scalar output, yes? What, okay. what does it mean to have product of Jacobian by arbitrary vector? Jacobian is just gradient transpose, yes? Okay. So you immediately will have gradient. Okay. You, you um, I, I, I would encourage you to uh, do in, in stages. First of all, we did it and we did it. We will be able to see how you do it and see how we are in the direction. Regarding your last comment about uh, Jacobian being... Uh, no, but... He was in the middle of the middle. Yes. Yeah. Is your question related or not? I, I don't understand. It's related to what you say. I just don't want to... Uh, uh, just just say, no, say no. once... Uh, five minutes after you finish answering their question, but fine. Okay. So we decided... Okay, okay, I, I see that we have a lot of work. M maybe in the end, I, I will need a few minutes break after we will finish with general part. And we will go together with these two technical questions. And I invite, strongly invite other students to help. We, we will try to do it together, okay? Okay, so let, let's move to general questions. Continue with general questions. So you said about uh, uh, Jacobian being gradient transpose. Uh, I thought it's only true for scalar functions. Like if it's a vector function, it's not true, right? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. But if you had the chain function of scalar and, and vector function, in the lecture we showed that Jacobian transpose of first part is very useful when you want to compute gradient of the entire network, I would say. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask also a question? Okay. I will share my screen. Um, so here you develop the, the gradient of the trace on a phi function. Yes. And can you see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay, and, and you move from the, the three time trace of the DAA square mm -hmm. to this, uh, to, to the inner product of DA with the three square transpose. Mm -hmm. But when I open it by the definition that uh, is right here, I get exactly the opposite. It's DA transpose, 3a square transpose. Actually, yes. when I developed it from, from but, but scratch, it, uh, it's the same. Yes. Uh, why is it the same? Because I, I got uh, okay, exactly let, the opposite. Let's, uh, let's try it together. Just hold, hold, hold uh, this slide. Just hold this slide, and uh, 
If A is symmetric, it's it's true. No, no, but no, if no, A no, not symmetric, about... it's not true. No, no, just, just a second. Uh, you have uh, uh, some ge general things. Trace uh, A B is uh, equal to trace B A. Okay, it's for general matrices. Now, okay. what is trace uh, A transpose B is uh, trace uh, B, B A transpose A transpose. Does it help or not yet? No, not yet because uh, here when, when Okay, you... and uh, A transpose B. Uh, uh, and uh, just a second, just say let's. Is it is it uh, is it equal to trace uh, B transpose A? I'm not sure. Because uh, we we always talked uh, about the, the two uh, first ones. I I would uh, use uh, other e e equality. Uh, I, I will write on free space trace of some matrix uh, uh, W is a trace W transpose. Oh, I have no trace uh, uh, of any square matrix. Yes. Trace of W equals to trace of W transpose. Yes. Yeah. If it's if I, matrix, so if okay. you uh, use this equality, you you will get what what you need. I I am sorry for ah, okay. this, but uh, this is a nice exercise to show that everything that I wrote in blue is correct in general. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, please. Okay. We have the one hour have, meeting. Uh, um, can I ask? Like two short questions, just to make sure. I, I uh, just a second. L let us think together. What if we uh, do ten minute break? Sure, no continue? problem. Sure, no problem. Okay, let's meet in ten. Ten, minutes. ten minutes. Okay. Good. I will uh, resume recording. So yes, about Gram Schmidt. About uh, Gram Schmidt. So um. This process, I just tried it on one of the questions that asked to run this on a set of uh, polynomials, which is one x, x squared, x uh, cubed. Ah. Um, and it doesn't did work. You see, did you see our, you didn't see our Zoom class. We solved I, this problem in the class. No, no, I actually did it, but ah, okay. I noticed, what I noticed Yes. Is that this formula has has a uh, has an error? I'm just I'm just because I, I actually did it properly and it worked. Um, what happens is, um, in order for this to work, x one needs to be normalized for this to be to work, and then this this gives not orthogonal but orthonormal vectors. Um, if because we divide here by by the by the norm, if we don't divide by this norm right here. Then we yes. get orthogonal. Yeah, that's that's exactly. when I, when I worked it when I worked it out. That's that's the way it worked. Yes. Uh, uh, thank I'm, you I'm, very much for a very important comment. And uh, the answer is yes. The okay, because because it was yes. nowhere. I was looking and everything, but it's yes. So the the, the answer is with yes. The version of Gram Schmidt. Uh, Procedure we use in uh, conjugate directions is without normalization, just for technical reasons, it's convenient for us. And if if you will go with this procedure, you will get uh, orthogonal, even with functions, you will get orthogonal, but not. Yeah, yeah no, normal. that's that's fine. When I remove this norm, this the, the the division by this norm, then everything worked fine. It wasn't a problem. This is this is weird. Just uh, at both locations at both locations uh, yes yes second. no if you need to leave this in but this you need to remove just a second just a second, just a second. if you are just a second 
if you uh, if you build procedure for vectors which are orthogonal your output vectors will be orthogonal but you don't require them to be normalized uh, i think this is right procedure if you j uh, just a second let, let me finish my, mm -hmm. if you require them to be normalized then you put also normalization as part of procedure and the tell again what what, what do what do i'm saying say? is yes. for it, it because we didn't normalize this yes. then this should not be in here and this should not be in here yeah uh, you 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 mean uh, it doesn't matter yes no it matters because if you do divide by this norm yes. and you do normalize this because you didn't normalize x1 Yes. then um, you're getting a situation where after you finish the process and you check, then you get that the vectors are not orthogonal. Just a second, just a second. Okay. So assume that you use normalization. So your Y1 is not just X1, it's x1 divided by the norm of x1. Yes. This is... It, uh, just a second, just a second, just a second. This means that norm of y1 is equal to 1. Yes, exactly. Then it doesn't matter whether you have it uh, in the second row in the denominator or you, or you don't. Exactly. That's fine. Um, what I'm saying is if you don't write this little piece here, the yes. division by the norm of x1, then this doesn't hold. That's that's all I'm saying. After a lot of iterations through the process. So um, again, if you do normalize, it work. If you if I, if I do normalize, it also work. Then if this... I if if I do normalize here right here, yes. it works fine. If I remove this, if yes. this is like this, if I just write this, yes. this what is written right here doesn't work. No, it should work. It just I, I can, I can you, show you an ex I can show you the exact I can show you the just example. Second. It doesn't Let, work. Let's think together, and I even will ask help of other students. I can show you the calculations. Uh, it yes, just doesn't yes, work. Let, let's go step by step. Uh, first of all, one step before your your calculation. This procedure without normalization will it give us uh, the set of orthogonal vectors or not? I think so. I think yes, but this process, the way it's written right now, doesn't give orthogonal uh, vectors. Just a second. Let's think together. Uh, uh, I should use... because you just play with the direction, with the the magnitude of the direction. The direction is still the same. No? Pay pay attention. That this vector is always normalized. Yes. Which vector? Which I circled now. This is always normalized, yes. And this is all, always no, uh, no, uh, normalized. <laughs> uh, so uh, if uh, Y1 is not, not normalized, my question, will be Y2 orthogonal to X1 and to Y1? If, if we don't normalize Y1 right here, then yes, y2 will be orthogonal to y1, yes. If you fo follow by this formula. If I remove this, if this isn't no, no, written. No, no, if you go with this formula like, like it is written. And no, I can show you the calculation, it doesn't work. It's not orthogonal. Let, let's uh, put it in the, in the end. I, I am afraid that there is uh, some mis mistake. What are opinions of other participants? I need your help. Well, no, I, I need help of audience, you know, in this uh, t television show. I I go, I take my uh, my bonus uh, help of audience. I don't think the I don't think the norm should really matter because. So, too... I'll explain. Sorry, Shaka, that I'm that I'm, I'm just because after a lot of this, this has taken to be about four yeah. hours of of, of Let, calculation. Let's uh, postpone it to. Yeah, I'm sure. Day. I'm sure. I'm sure. Very. very <laughs> Technical stuff, we postpone it to, to the end. For, for now, my feeling is, is that uh, this is okay. 
Uh, okay, uh, I'll sh I'll show you at the end the okay, calculation. Okay. I'll show you what doesn't work. Will, uh, and 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 the, the next question I have. Um, yeah. Wait, let me just remove. Um, I, I should remove uh, my, my. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and then the next question I have uh, right here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have. So what we're doing here um, is we're trying to minimize this, and we're saying that the sum. Um, that the minimum of a sum is the sum of the minimums. Um, but alpha doesn't have to, oh wait, this is alpha. So the alpha here, right here, um, doesn't need to be um, positive. It could be negative. Ah, it it does, doesn't mean whether it's positive or ne ne negative. And, and that's, that's my bottom, question. Uh, ju uh, just a second. Let, let me partially answer and then you will uh, return to your, to your question. In, in the bottom, where, where is my V? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have arbitrary function of um, many variables, which is a sum of functions where each each of those functions depends only on one variable. This is very general claim. It doesn't depend on structure of every particular function. Minimum okay. of the sum is sum of minimum because every minimization is independent on any other minimization. I'm. I'm just. This is. This is where I'm having a problem with, with that exact statement. That's. That's the statement I'm having a problem with. Yeah. Um. That I'm okay. not understanding. Uh, let, let Let us take example. Can you provide me white uh, piece of Whiteboard? white space any any anywhere? Um. Just move move on some slide which is less loaded. Oh. <laughs> uh, let me find one. Maybe here. <laughs> okay. In this, this corner. Is okay. Let's uh, do this. Okay, it's enough. Thank you very much. So, yeah, if I have a f uh, of x, x, uh, x one squared plus uh, minus x two plus exponent uh, uh, exponent is not good because it doesn't have minimum yes so I need how do I undo here okay plus uh, I don't know cosinus of x3 okay the only difference uh, I have uh, sorry <laughs> Just a second. I have problems with my writing. X3. Uh, just a second. Let, let's go step, mm -hmm. step by step because it's not only serves you, it serves all okay, other sure no problem. So, so you should put the uh, things in a nice way that students will get this. Sure thing. You, uh, if, if, if I, if I uh, choose X1, which is if I choose some uh, good x2 and x3, yes? Mm -hmm. And choose x1, which is not minimized. Uh, actually, here it's zero, yes? If x1 is not zero, I will increase the total result, yes? Okay. It's be best for me to choose x1 e equal to zero. You, are, you agree? Independently yes. on what is choice of x2 and x3. Okay. So it says it's illustration that it's good for us independently and each each term. If I already found the X1 and X3 and ask what X2 should I choose? Of course, I will choose X2 which minimizes sine. Which is X2, which X minimizes sine? No, that would be um, minus uh, pi, uh, half pi. Yes, yes. Thank you very much for remembering school mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do, uh, do you agree that uh, 
our solution. So we will write it explicitly. X1 is zero, yes. Mm -hmm. X2 is uh, uh, minus, say, pi over two, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, X3 be minus pi is uh, just a second Qu uh, cosinus of pi is minus one yes mm -hmm. okay. pi minus pi same thing oh pi or oh, minus pi yes uh, do you agree that this is uh, you you know it's always very useful for brain to take uh, an example then your intuition develop it do you agree that this is actually minimizer of our f of x? Yes. Okay. So th this is a general statement. If, you, if I have sum of functions, each of them depends on, on particular other variable, then I just minimize each of them and take sum. Is it okay? So if um. I if I have uh, yes, I'm I'm some, trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap uh, my head around it for a second. I just uh, write it. Some of phi, phi i of x. Uh, if I want to minimize, yes, is uh, equal to sum of minima of phi i of x. This is ge uh, general statement. Let's put some line around to separate. Mm. This is a good example. Lo looking on particular and general, your brain gradually will get close. You, you will get that. You will. Oh, I, I see where I see where, join, where my, my confusion this, came from. Yeah, you, I can see where my confusion came knowledge from. With your, you, internal you no no you okay I, I get where my I, I i understand now where, where my confusion came from okay i, uh, I decided please, something no, else no please explain it's also good you uh, know, i just psychological meeting it's just um i was seeing it as you could take uh the minimum uh, of so, two so, sorry uh, just a second my writing was bad xi here yes yeah I, yes it's actually an alpha i times alpha i but sure no no problems same thing um the the i guess i guess my uh my confusion came from the fact that i could choose like if i take if i take different numbers <clears throat> as alphas i can get to a certain minimum which i'm bounded by and then but if i take them separately i may be going i may i get lower a lower minimum but i'm I'm getting confused, I guess. That's that's where my confusion came from. I guess I didn't write it down with an example, and then that shows, like, the example okay, so shows it. So the numerical it example is, is useful. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you very much. I, I really thank you for those questions, because they help other students to start li living with this stuff. 